Okay, and we are live. Welcome to Ask Dr. Love Podcast. I want you to remember that love is the answer. What is your question? So this podcast is about Asian medicine, herbal medicine, self-healing empowerment, self-massage, nutritional supplements, and food therapy. And you can ask me any questions about that that you want. So we are on day five of our 21 Days to Wellness program. And on day five, we are juicing for breakfast and dinner and we're eating salad for lunch. And I have made some of the most delicious salads ever. All my food is medicine. So somebody asked me a question, what about cravings? And that was an excellent question to ask. So if you crave crunchy food, it's because you're angry. If you like pretzels and chips and crackers, it's because you're suppressing your anger. You want crunchy food. If you're craving salty foods, it's because of anxiety. So salt, a little bit of salt is good for the kidneys. Too much salt, bad for the kidneys. If you're craving sweet foods, sugary foods, it's because you need sweetness in your life. There's not a lot of love. If you are craving creamy foods, it's because you don't have enough comfort in your life. So, what if you like salty pretzels dipped in chocolate? <laughs> so that covers sweet, salt, and crunchy. And what if you like salted caramel ice cream? Wow, you have anxiety, creamy, and comfort, and lack of sweet in your life. So we have these cravings because of our emotional imbalances. And I'm gonna repeat this nine times a day until the day I die. Your emotional states predict your behavior and your decisions. All of your decisions are because of how you feel. And you can either choose your emotional state to be neutral or you can allow external circumstances to dictate your emotional state so sometimes I get really worked up and other times I'm like really laid back today is my laid-back day there's a lot going on in the world there's a lot going on locally there's a lot going on in your house there's a lot going on in your head, and there's a lot going on in your heart. And how do you reconcile? How do you balance all of these things that are going on in your head, your heart, your house? Wow. So we're choosing to juice for 21 days. And by juicing, we don't allow salt, sugar, crunchy, sweet, creamy, to pull us out of balance. So my emotional state chooses the food, the food reinforces the emotional state. So now we all have something that we call a comfort food. So when I was a kid, Sunday morning was comfort food. We had waffles, with log cabin, log cabin syrup and sharp cheddar cheese and bacon and grits with big dollops of butter and scrambled eggs with cheese. So that was my comfort food. 
and that was a huge Sunday morning breakfast. And we didn't do anything physically to demand that we eat that way. It was just something my family did. So as an adult, I continued that Sunday morning tradition of going and eating this humongous thing. And then I would lay in bed all day and I'd watch cartoons or I'd read the funny papers or whatever. And then Monday, I'd feel all sluggish and stuffy and nasally from the food that I ate. And then that would put me into a very mild depression because I was sluggish and I wasn't feeling well because I was overeating on Sunday, which would give me the Monday morning blues. Now, some people have legit Monday morning blues because they hate their jobs. Some people go out Sunday night and get drunk because they got to go to work the next day. So those are some legit Monday morning blues. But mine was from overeating. So you've got to find out eating with food because that's what I was doing. I was self-medicating with food and you've got to figure out how to do that. <laughs> That's my fault. I turned off the airplane mode. <laughs> so here we are, day five. So we're juicing, we're doing emotional cleansing, we're doing Qigong energetic cleansing, and we're doing spirit Transcend dance. So we're doing dancing cleansing of the Holy Spirit. So if you go to 21 days to wellness.com, register for the newsletter, and then we will send you the daily updates about what you need to be doing each day of the 21 days. Now I already drank my juice. Usually you catch me sipping my juice, but it's finished. And like I said, today is my relaxed day. Today, I don't feel energized to put out a lot of energy or do a lot of things. I just want to be a mellow day. As a matter of fact, I really don't even want to talk on the phone today. And the last five days, we've been putting out a lot of energy, uh, answering emails, answering text messages, direct messaging, on our five, uh, we have the Blue Dragon Academy site, we have the Love Qigong site, we got the 21 Days to Wellness, we've got Love Chinese Medicine, we've got Dr. Chi Love, uh, and we've got George Xavier Love. So I got a lot of pages, a lot of contact, and a lot of content. So I'm happy to serve you. But there's a lot of misinformation and disinformation, and I'm here to help clear that up. So any questions that you might have about stuff you've heard, stuff you've read, uh, can you um, do steam baths, can you do Epsom salt baths, can you do certain things that will kill the virus? You can't kill something that's not alive. So I just want to make a really quick analogy. HIV is not gone, it's still around. People are still dying from HIV. And I suspect that in COVID-19, 30 years from now, will still be around. But we, don't, we are not going to have to do the social distancing. As a matter of fact, our wonderful president is going to tell us we're going to go back to work April 30th. So May 1st, we're having a bust and loose party. And the only way you can find out the various locations of the bust and loose party is when you go to 21days2wellness.com. So each week of the three weeks of the 21 days, you're going to learn two or three different Qigong exercises. You're gonna learn an acu-tapping method to break neural patterns 
of addiction to suffering. Wow, I don't like to suffer. I know you don't like to suffer. And yet, we do things that make us suffer. Why? Why indeed? Well, in order to answer why for you, because there's no one answer that serves everybody's issues, so you have to meditate. So I'm going to teach you three easy things that's going to help you learn how to meditate better. First of all, it's your posture. So you have to sit up straight. You can't like lay back and meditate. You have to sit on the edge of your chair. You have to cross your ankles. Your knees have to be lower than your hips. Then you have to elongate. You have to tuck your chin in, elevate the head. That's the right posture. Then you have to breathe properly. The breathing is the key. So when we meditate, you're going to take a deep breath in and you're going to count to seven as you breathe out. Deep breath in and then count to seven as you breathe out. Deep breath in, count to seven as you breathe out. And that is our breath. Now, there's eight different breathing exercises, but that's the first one I'm going to teach you. The third thing you have to do in order to meditate is your visualization. Now, we all know we have a third eye. Third eye is related to the pituitary gland. Now, here's the, here is the big mystery. There are two optic nerves in your brain but the nerves are not connected to a sense organ. So since there's no sense organ, what is the point of the optic nerve? Now, the pituitary gland is not a sense organ, technically, but in fact, it is, because the pituitary gland is what we call the master gland. It manufactures all of the digestive enzymes all of the hormones all of the glandular secretions are manufactured by the pituitary the pituitary senses it is a sense organ so it takes the information from your eyes from your ears from your nose from your mouth from your touch and what we call extra sensory perception it takes all that in and then it has to make a decision what it's going to do with that information so the hippocampus receives that information from the six senses and the pineal and then it kicks it upstairs to the cortical process which we call the higher mind so we have a reptilian brain we have a mammalian brain and we have a divine mind. And so the hippocampus takes all that sensory information up to the neocortex, brings it back down, and then the hypothalamus then sends that out to the body so it acts out. Now the visualization that is required is the one that you want, the solution that you're looking for. Do you prefer the beach? Do you prefer the mountains? Do you prefer the meadow? Do you prefer the lake? So you want to visualize the thing that creates internal homeostasis. Now some people look at a candle. Other people look at a photograph. Other people look at a painting. Other people look at geometric interlocking patterns. Some people look at a mandala so there's all kinds of things we can look at in order to create a visualization the eyes are the window to the soul the eyes take the information in and then puts information out 
the eyes are also a mirror reflection. So posture, breathing, visualization. Now, the whole point of meditation is not to think about something, it's to not think at all, it's to shut it all down. Now, I lecture frequently on sleepitation. What happens when you go to sleep? Where do you go when you go to sleep? The short answer is you go to God. And what that really means is your brain waves start to slow down from beta to alpha to theta to delta. And delta is the slowest brain wave vibration. And when you get into delta, you're directly connected laterally to the most high or whatever name of the 99 names of God that you choose. So when you connect, then you get to see, and that is your dream. You actually see in your dreams, and your eyes are closed, and that's when your third eye is open. So we need darkness to trigger the third eye to open. But when you meditate on a regular basis, guess what happens? You can use your third eye to see with your eyes open. Now, if you want to learn how to do that, go to patreon.com, Dr. Chi Love, and register. And there'll be information on sleepitation on how you can meditate asleep or awake. So, Mr. Holistic Motivator, has anyone chimed in? Not yet. So, we're live on YouTube, we're live on Instagram, and we're live on Facebook. And Periscope. And we're live on Periscope. Wow. So, I love you, and that's why I'm giving you this information. Well, while everybody think of the, their questions, can, um, we just created a Facebook group, which is on pinned down to the first link, which is about the webinar you're going to have on Friday. Mm. So, we have a new way of delivering the webinar through a Facebook group. Can you tell them about that so they can check that out? Okay, so every Friday night we do a free webinar. Last week we did the formula for mental wellness. And we're going to do a part two on the formula for mental wellness. Because there's no way we can cover that in one hour. So I gave a chart. And if you go to Patreon, you can access the information. I actually wrote it out on, on a whiteboard presentation. And there were so many questions I couldn't cover in that hour. That's why we're going to do a part two, and we're going to go a little bit deeper. So one of the things I want to cover is the AccuTapping method. And you might have heard of EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique, by Gary Craig. I also studied with Gary Craig, and I challenged him, and I said, I know this is Chinese medicine. He said, yeah, I know it's Chinese medicine too. I said, but I want to teach it differently. He says, you can teach it whatever way you want. You can call it whatever you want, but you got to teach it. You cannot let this knowledge go to waste. So it's based on Gary Craig's work, but I tweaked it. And I call it AccuTapping because all of the points are actually acupuncture points that we tap. And the point is to break the neural patterns of addiction. Now, if any of you've watched any EFT videos, they use two fingers, I use three fingers. They go on the same side, I go on the opposite side. And there's a few other little uh, tips and tricks that I use that make it different. 
the number one is what are you asking for how do you identify what your issue is and then how can you break that stagnation because accumulation of anything the over accumulation and that's a very human trait so we accumulate and then that becomes chi stagnation and then chi stagnation transforms into inflammation and then inflammation transforms into dis-ease so there's a whole process whereby you get sick so we're here to build your immune system or more importantly to teach you how you can build your immune system and your beliefs your attitudes your perspectives your perceptions are all part and parcel of how your immune system works and that's the reason why you have to learn how to do this properly and effectively because you don't have to get sick from any coughed cold flu virus Ebola HIV you don't have to get sick because we've got 30 years of case studies that prove that people who were infected never got sick never took the cocktail of drugs all they did was the things that I recommend <clears throat> and when you go to patreon you get the 12-week guide which is sent out in weekly packets of information on how you can transform your immune system into a shield that protects you against virus bacteria fungus and parasites So, um, are there any... I have some unanswered questions from yesterday. Okay. Um, is, is the herb sage helpful to boost the immune system? That is an excellent question. There is the... Is the herb sage effective in building the immune system? There's no studies from a Western med medical standpoint that sage builds the immune system. However, in the East, we drink sage tea the first 24 hours that you get a cold or you feel yourself coming down with a cold. You drink sage tea. We do that in Morocco. We do that in Egypt, we do that in Persia. So if they're drinking sage tea, now in, in the Americas we burn sage and we do something called smudging. Now, does smudging take bacteria out of the air? Again, no scientific test studies to prove that because anything external 50-50. So Western medicine is only interested in looking at drug cures. So they're not going to test sage. So if you believe that sage is effective because of historical use, then I would say continue to use it and I do the same thing. But I'm not asking you to believe what I believe. You'll have to do independent verification for yourself and then share it back with us. Okay, you have another question from yesterday. Yeah. Um, what is the best way to engage them? Myelin? How do you say that word? M Y E L L N? The myelin, myelin sheath? Myelin sheets. What was the best way to What is the best the way to sheet? engage the myelin sheath? Should the light weight be used or just focused intention? Only? Just just focused intention. That's because you, we use our own body weight. Before we in, invented weight lifting equipment, we used our own body weight. Okay? And that's why we do swing arms. 
That's why we do teacups. All those things engage the myelin sheath. Even uh, somebody said that I don't have a dental infection. Well, that looks like a consultation question. Um, any more questions? Now's the time to ask Dr. Love. <laughs> well, there was a question from Serena, but I thought it was a medical question. Okay. I heal carpal tunnel syndrome. Ah, okay. So carpal tunnel syndrome is where there is a, um, a wrapping of the tendons that tighten, which makes it hard to use your fingers. So if you're a trumpet player, trombone player, saxophone player, stress will cause that sheath to, to grip so you won't be able to move your fingers. So we use acupuncture now, Qigong takes longer, it's a little more uncomfortable, but we do fingertip push-ups. And you can't do fingertip push-ups until you can do knuckle push-ups. So we start with knuckle push-ups, then we do fingertip push-ups. And that will, that will break that open. Or acupuncture. And we can also use magnet therapy. We can place a magnet on the point and tape the magnet on. Those are three different ways you can use Chinese medicine to treat carpal tunnel. Nice. Would it be okay to wear wrist or ankle weights while doing Qigong exercises? Would it be okay to wear wrist or ankle weights while doing Qigong? That would be okay once you've mastered the movements. So you'd have to master the movement first which is, I'm gonna say 90 days. And then you can use ankle weights or wrist weights. Or you can do what we're gonna do in class. We're gonna use two pound weights and we're gonna do the teacup exercises with two pound weights. And so we're gonna do um, dragon, flying dragon with two pound weights. So there's all kinds of exercises that we do use two pound weights and that will build up the external strength. So my focus is on internal, but the people who are coming to me don't have external strength to start with. So we start with the external and then we go internal. All right, um, no more questions. Okay, so tune in Friday night for Mental Wellness Part 2 and join the online Qigong class, loveqigong.com. And if you want to get on the newsletter, go to 21 Days to Wellness. Yeah, actually, about um, products on your site. That's you it. Products. Okay. That's part of the 21 Days to Wellness. You didn't tell them about that. I didn't tell them about that. Okay. In the past, I was reluctant to sell products, but given the current state of the world, I'm being forced to sell products. So the number one product is the seven day detox kit, which is part of the 21 days to wellness. The seven day detox kit has five ingredients. So one is agar agar powder, which is a sea vegetable fiber that pulls debris throughout the digestive system. One is cayenne and garlic capsules. One is bee pollen that keeps your energy level high. One is a blue-green algae, which feeds your brain a high-quality vegetable protein. And then the last ingredient is a stool softener, which breaks up uh, congestion in your colon. Those five ingredients with the carrot, celery, beet, ginger, turmeric juice is the core of the second week of the 21-day program. Then we have ear acumagnets. These are 2,000 Gauss magnets 
that clip on the ear and there is a uh, there's a website and there's charts and there's an ebook so if you go to lovechinesemedicine.com slash store and then you scroll down to products you'll see the ear magnets and the ear book and what have you so those are the two main products then we have the um, the Qi Baton which is a tool that we use to align the spine and as a footsie roller and as a tool for our Thai yoga, our Qigong yoga exercise, our moving meditation. So those are just some of the products and then of course I've got a dozen books that I've written. They're also on the website lovechinesemedicine.com slash store. So, uh, and of course I sell Chinese herbs. There's 12 herbs that I keep in stock um, for cough, cold, flu, uh, for stomach upset, for heart issues, lung issues, kidney issues, uh, liver issues, and digestive disorders. So I keep those 12 formulas in stock and we can go from there. Alright, so that's about it. Okay, well thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please join the online class in the morning. You get so much more depth from that. Take the free webinar, but if you want to support the work that I do in bringing this information to you, then go to patreon.com slash D-R-Q-I-L-O-V-E, Dr. Chi Love. So I want you to remember your health is in your hands. Prevention is the only cure. And in order to be well, you've got to breathe well. Thank you.